What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another optimization guide. This one is Stalker 2. So, before we get into optimizing it, there's a couple of things that you need to know. This game does need more time to bake, and the developers are actively working on things really quickly. So, FPS and input latency are probably going to be addressed in the somewhat near future, but for now, the game is an optimization mess for the most part, and you can only squeeze so much performance out of it, especially if you have the right hardware. What do I mean by that? Well, this game at 1080p is really CPU limited. If you have a powerful graphics card like a 4080, 3080, then changing your graphics settings with a low powered CPU isn't going to really gain you anything. You can play on the highest graphics options and the lowest, and if your CPU isn't good enough at 1080p, you're not going to gain any extra FPS. That does change at 2K and 4K, but for the most part, it's heavily CPU limited. If you're playing at 1080p and you have a 3060 Ti equivalent or lower, changing your in-game options isn't going to really gain you that much FPS, unless you have a really good CPU in most cases. That being said, I have a 3080 Ti, which is a powerful graphics card, and I have a powerful CPU as well, so changing some settings should gain me some extra FPS, especially because I'm not gaming at 1080p. Currently, with everything set all the way to the lowest possible option in game, so DLSS quality, everything else down on low, at 2K with a 3080 Ti, I'm getting 45 FPS. That's not great, but I am running a whole bunch of stuff in the background. If I close everything, I'll probably get maybe, say, 50. Input latency is a huge issue with this game. You may notice some weird stuttering. Shooting is definitely a chore unless you have the graphics quality cranked all the way down if you're not reaching a comfortable 60 FPS. If you're at 60 and above, well, things feel a lot better. From 44 on the lowest possible settings, I'll crank it all the way up to the highest possible settings. Epic. This does require a restart for some options, but most of them do change. And performance-wise, I've only dropped to 35 FPS. 33. So that's maybe 10-ish FPS, which is, well, 20% performance loss by moving from low to epic. So that's not a huge amount. Usually in other games, you'll see 50% or something like that from lowering your settings, but here it's ultimately not all that much. Input latency is noticeably worse, and for that exact reason, I personally wouldn't be able to play this game on anything but the lowest possible settings for graphics here. If you're like me and you need to play this game on low, there's a couple of things I'd recommend raising. First of all, texture quality. Raising this all the way up from whatever it is to epic, if you have 6 or so gigs of VRAM, you should comfortably be able to play the game with the max FPS, and things should look a whole lot better. Well, pretty much for free. So, from 44, waiting for everything to load in, I'm still at 44, even though I've cranked my textures all the way up, meaning I've just gained some free quality with no FPS drop. For the most part, most of these settings here will have an impact on your performance. I would recommend scrolling down to performance boost. We have upscaling, and this is going to be super important. Changing between no upscaling, so for example, DLAA, where AI is used to upscale, or none, for which I get 38, 40 ish FPS. If I push it on, say, DLSS or FSR to the performance setting here, or ultra performance, my game is going to lose a lot of visual quality, but performance wise, we've moved up to 50 ish FPS, which is much more playable. And of course, input latency has reduced as well. For the most part, if you've already dropped all of your settings, besides texture quality, what you should play with is upscaling. DLSS and FSR aren't going to give you similar performance improvements. Essentially, when you have this turned off versus all the way to performance, you can usually expect a 30 to 50% gain in FPS. I wouldn't recommend pushing it past performance at 2K slash 4K. And if you're on 1080p, well, obviously it's not going to do much if you're CPU limited, but assuming you have a really powerful CPU, you could stand to gain a little bit of performance here, maybe from performance to balance at lowest. For me personally, I'll be playing probably at performance or balanced just because I need that extra performance as input latency is pretty horrible without DLSS. That being said, FSR should give you a very similar result. The one thing I would recommend lowering pretty much all the way is motion blur strength. Personally, when this is on and there's a huge amount of input latency, it just compounds that sickening feeling of things being weirdly delayed. So I've turned this off completely. Then scrolling down, performance boost. The other thing I wouldn't really recommend is frame generation. While this does technically double your FPS, you can use DLSS frame generation on RTX 40 series cards or FSR 3 on any graphics card. If I enable this, my FPS will technically go from 40 to 80 something, even if my overlay doesn't reflect that. Oh, there we go. 83. Input latency is almost exactly the same. Yes, looking around, the game does look noticeably smoother. There's less weird jumping between frames and it seems a lot better. The issue is, is that 
The thing that doesn't translate to video very well is input latency. If I move my mouse, it's a solid half a second before things react. If I turn off frame generation, it's a solid maybe 100, 200 milliseconds. It's not much at all. This is mostly playable at around 50 to 60 frames. Besides that, there's not too much we can do here. Everything else I've already got lowest down to the lowest possible settings on the display tab, Full screen versus full screen borderless performance is going to be about the same and field of view here is something I've just personally changed. While this does technically affect performance, if I drop it from 110 to 70, I go from 44-ish FPS up to 51, I'm now super zoomed in, it's going to be a lot more difficult to play the game. So again, as it always is, field of view should be your preference. Personally, I need it a lot higher, especially on an ultra wide display. And at the very bottom, VSync should definitely be turned off, otherwise you'll get even more input latency. Frame rate should be unlimited if you want the best frame rate. You can hypothetically cap this to slightly below what you're getting for more consistent frame pacing and not notice so many weird stutters. Then Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, if you have an Nvidia graphics card, definitely turn this on as things are going to improve quite a bit. If I look around, it's no noticeably more snappy, but again, it's still a little bit delayed. Finally, HDR is your preference again. If you have an HDR compatible display, it's probably going to gain you a lot of visual quality turning it on as things are just going to look quite a bit better. Beyond that, if you're looking for brightness, it's at the bottom of display. So contrast, gamma and brightness, super useful, especially in the dark areas if you're playing in a light room. And besides that, that's really it. So unfortunately, there's not all too much we can do as of yet. If things do change, I'll make sure to post an updated video and of course, link it down below. But for the most part, you now have somewhat of an understanding of what exactly is going on and what to expect. If you have powerful hardware, this game is going to perform okay, if not well. If you have lesser powerful hardware, there's only so much you can squeeze out of it. If you have a 3060 Ti and a really high powered CPU, if you play at 1080p, you'll see frames between 50, 55 on the lowest possible settings, all the way down to 20 on Epic. And if you're going to be playing this game beyond a certain point of lowering your graphic settings, you're not going to gain too much based on your system. For Epic settings, I'd recommend probably at least a 4070 or the AMD equivalent. For high, a 3060 Ti, somewhere around there. And medium's about the same for low, probably a 4050, 3060 at lowest. Again, that's 1080p. That's just to get a playable, maybe 60 FPS. As this game is really chugging for me, I think it's probably got to do with all of the background processes I have open. If you're like me, restart your PC so it's clean before you play the game, and you should have a slightly better experience, closing everything in the background, streams, YouTube, Chrome tabs, etc. And things should noticeably improve, especially if you're heavily CPU limited. Make sure you're not downloading, updating games, etc. in the background. And as for hard drive versus SSD performance, this game is massive at 150 gigabytes. It's not quite Call of Duty, but it is definitely going to be something a lot of people are going to struggle to fit on their systems if you're running out of SSD space already. Personally, I've had this on both a hard drive and an SSD, and performance seems pretty comparable on the both of them. It's not all that different. But anyways, that's really it. Do let me know what you think down below. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching and good luck out there. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.